Good evening on this mid, uh, mid February Tuesday evening for my latest instalment of my Principles of Good Health series. And tonight I thought I'd specifically focus on B12. Um, it's because I've got a few friends recently that have been diagnosed or of either really low B12 or on the borderline of being considered to be low on B12 and clients as well. Now, I don't know if this is just an age thing as I'll come on to talk about because age can be a factor in this, but it's just suddenly that I, I noticed quite a few people and I thought it might be really useful to explain what B12 is, why we need it, why you may be finding a, a deficiency, what are the signs and symptoms and really what you can do about it. Either if you think you've got B12 diagnosed with low, reasonably low B12 or how you can just keep your levels up throughout your adult life. Um, so what can I tell you about B12? I think we need to start with the signs and symptoms and really I think the most obvious sign of being low in B12 is having really extreme fatigue. Most people think of fatigue and start to think about iron, but it's surprising actually that if blood tests are carried out that it's the B12 that is showing up. So extreme fatigue and lethargy. You could find that you're running so low on energy that you just cannot get through the day. You may start off the day trying to do reasonable tasks and then just find you haven't got enough energy just to continue through the day or you're absolutely wiped out. So that's a really obvious sign, but there's quite a few other signs that are really important to understand and to think about and think, you know, could this be you? Now, I do need to make it clear that what I'm talking about here is not saying that because you've got these, any of these symptoms that it definitely means it's B12. And there are blood tests that you can do that will help determine that. But these are things that you might want to look out for. So the extreme fatigue and lethargy is most definitely one that is very common. The other ones, and there's quite a few here, uh, confusion and poor memory recall. Having a low mood or even having a diagnosis actually of being depressed and being put on antidepressants. Um, muscle weakness and dizziness, loss of appetite, having headaches, having pale skin, irritability, breathlessness and palpitation. So it's a really broad range of symptoms. So it's not surprising that people who do eventually get diagnosed, and I use the word eventually because it can take months if not years to come up with this sort of diagnosis, that people feel so debilitated in their day-to-day -day life that can, they can really start worrying about what might be going on. And it can sometimes take quite a bit of pushing, I think, with your GP to actually get the relevant blood tests carried out to actually identify that this may be the cause. Now, B12 is um, a war one of many water-soluble B vitamins, um, but B12 in particular is involved with red blood cell production. And this is where it's important for the energy because red blood cells are the ones that carry oxygen around the body. B12 is also involved with DNA manufacture, and it has a really crucial role involved in brain function and in nerve function as well. So it's understandable when we talk about low mood and dizziness and weakness and poor memory recall, why, you know, we, we talk about why they can be common symptoms if it's linked to, uh, B12 is linked to brain function and nerve function as well. Now, why is it, where do we get B12 from? And why is it such a risk factor for vegetarians and in particular vegans? Well, B12 is found in animal foods and it's really important that vegans and vegetarians understand this so that you can take a, a proactive approach to managing your where you're going to get B12 from. So it is an animal based um, vitamin. It's really rich in meats, organ meats, red meats, in poultry in fish and seafood. It's also found in eggs and in dairy produce. So if you're vegetarian and you're eating those foods, then that's great. 
But if you're vegan, your intake is going to be very, very low. Now, I know vegans may read online that you can get it from yeast extract like Marmite and you can get it in nutritional yeast and you may find it in spirulina and you may find it in things like mushrooms. But the amount is so minuscule that your amount you're um, intaking each day is nowhere near your NRV, which is the nutrient reference value, which is what we used to call the RDA and has now been renamed the NRV. You, it's going to be really difficult, in fact impossible, to get the amount of B12 that you need through your vegan sources, which is why it's so important to take a proactive approach. Um, what's interesting, something I learned, I think when I was doing my training a really long time ago, is that um, it's a really important phrase, it can take five years to show up a deficiency in the body. The reason being for this is I mentioned that it's a water-soluble vitamin. Now, water-soluble vitamins don't readily get stored in the body. Fat-soluble vitamins get stored in our fat cells, but water-soluble vitamins don't get stored and get excreted from the body. However, with B12, the liver is capable of storing it and it can hold stores for between, on average, two and four years. So say you had uh, great stores of B12 that was sufficient to last you for four years. It's going to be during your fifth year that you start to start to notice signs and symptoms because the amount that you've got available is declining so that you run out of your stores and you start to become deficient if you're not getting sufficient intake coming in. So it's a really important thing. Five years to show up a deficiency is actually a really long time and I believe that that's why people who follow a vegan diet, and this isn't the case for everybody, but why some people who start off on a vegan diet may really thrive on it initially, but unless you're taking that proactive approach to managing your intake of all your nutrients, that by the time the years go on and maybe by that fifth year, possibly before, uh, some vegans can start to flag and not feel so great. And typical signs and symptoms are the uh, lacking energy and the low mood, and they're two typical signs. It may not just be due to B12, but it can be one of the factors there. Now, another thing to be really aware of, and something you would not consider at all when we're thinking about B12, is the fundamental and crucial role of the stomach. The stomach uh, secretes very important secretions that are both important in the uh, being able to extract and absorb B12 from our food. So you may well be eating great animal sources for getting your B12, but unless your stomach is enabling you to um, uptake B12, then you're gonna, then you could potentially struggle as the years go on. Now we've got stomach acid and another thing called intrinsic factor. Stomach acid cleaves apart the B12 from your food and intrinsic factor is involved in the absorption of B12 from, not just from the stomach, but from the small intestines and up into the bloodstream. So you need those two things, they're really important. They're both produced in the stomach. Stomach acid, hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. Now we take it for granted that the body is perfectly capable of digesting our food but unfortunately there are several factors to bear in mind and I think this is one of the reasons why as we start to get beyond 40 it can be something that can start to become apparent as we get into our 40s into our 50s and beyond. And the first thing to think about is do you take stomach acid lowering medication. There are different types of uh, medication. There's the H2 um, antagonists that inhibit the secretion of stomach acid, but they also inhibit the secretion of intrinsic factor. So collectively, you've got that double whammy that's going to make it really impossible or really difficult to be able to absorb B12 from your food. Um, the particular medications are ranitidine, which is a prescribed medication, but you've also got the over-counter medications like Zantac. Um, so be very much aware of that. Ranitidine does not seem to be a medication that's so well prescribed now, and I think that might be the reason why. But the ones that are readily prescribed are the ones I call proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, lanzoprazole and different names similar to that which don't have an impact on intrinsic factor but obviously they are lowering stomach acid. Now by lowering stomach acid do you have sufficient left to be adequately 
extracting B12, uh, cleaving it apart from your food to be able to absorb it into the bloodstream. So it's just something to bear in mind. And do you experience digestive symptoms? So you may not be on stomach acid lowering medication, but many people experience digestive symptoms and are living with them without thinking it's too much of a hindrance in their day-to-day -day life. But actually, these can be really crucial signs that I look out for with my clients that may be telling me that stomach acid levels for them are a little bit on the low side, maybe a little bit low, maybe too much too low. They're the typical symptoms of bloating and burping, indigestion, even acid reflux, which you may think is a sign of having too much stomach acid, but very often can be a sign of having too little. In my practice, I see this a lot. These can be signs of not having enough and therefore make it more difficult to absorb B12. Are you stressed? Have you got a lot of stresses going on in your life at the moment? Is stress continuous and quite chronic in your life? Because we know that stress impairs digestive secretions like the ones in the stomach and they may be contributing to a potential uh, greater difficulty in absorbing B12. And unfortunately, are you over 40? Uh, because as we get older, levels of stomach acid secretion do start to decline as we get older. Unfortunately, it's part and parcel of our ageing process. So what actions can you take? Well, you may be concerned and I, you know, I don't want to say everyone needs to go rushing off to their GP. But if the number of those symptoms that I mentioned, you think that may be me or you're experiencing some of those digestive symptoms alongside some of those um, symptoms to do with low B12, you may think, hmm, and your GP can run a blood test to look at your B12 levels. Now, you may either do it through GP, you might do a private test. I don't think a B12 test is that expensive to do and can be arranged. But one thing I do want you to bear in mind is I do want you, if you do do a test, is to really challenge your GP to get the accurate information about the results. The reason being for this is that the range of what is considered to be acceptable B12 levels is very, very wide. It ranges from a score of about 180, 185 up to 960. Now you think about this, if you come back with a score of 190, 185, 190, 200, 210, 250, whereas the upper limit is 960, and you're just inside this lower end of what's considered to be an acceptable normal range, but you feel you've got a lot of these other symptoms, well, is your level of B12 sufficient it may come in with inside this very vast normal range but i would challenge to say is your level sufficient and are you actually on the low side um, now if you're very low your gp may be recommending injections but we need to think beyond the injections that you're you're taking and making sure that your levels are sufficient going forward so of course the first thing to think about is are you eating those animal sources of B12? Um, and if you're not, you might want to be thinking about supplementing. And again, this is where we need to be quite careful. The first thing to think about is your type of B12 supplement. The most absorbable B12 supplement you can get is in the form of methylcobalamin. I'll say that again, it's called methylcobalamin. That is the best absorbed way of absorbing B12 um, into the body. So that's the, that's the only supplement and type and form I would recommend. Secondly, bearing in mind the difficulty that the stomach has with absorbing B12, so I've got some in my eye, um, then I would not just take any old bog standard pill that you swallow and still has to go through the same absorption process that food has to i.e. we've got to be able to absorb it from the gut and into the bloodstream. The best way, I think, to take a B12 in a supplement, other than being in the methylcobalamin form, is to use a spray, which spray onto the inside of your cheek, 
or a lozenge that you suck under your tongue because when you do that it goes straight into your bloodstream and completely bypasses the difficulty of the digestive tract so you're going to ensure that you get a much greater uptake of b12 into the body and typically in supplement forms you're going to see levels of a thousand to three thousand micrograms mcg and that's the amount that you would need to take to start to build up levels of B12 into the body. Um, and obviously we're looking at making sure you've got animal sources of food uh, to, if you're, if you're not vegan, obviously if you're vegan or vegetarian, you need to be supplementing and they're the supplements I'd look for. Um, but if you're eating animal-based foods, then you do need to be thinking about your stomach acid levels. If you're a bit unsure about whether your stomach acid levels are sufficient, then what you can do is you can help to um, encourage secretions at the start of a meal by eating uh, bitter foods like rocket and chicory and eating some of that at the start of a main meal. Um, other ways to gently increase stomach acidity is with two teaspoons of lemon juice in two teaspoons of water. And that's a really gentle way to uh, gently um, increase stomach acidity levels in a very gentle way that's going to help you extract your B12 from your food. I do frequently recommend stomach acid in supplement form to my clients based on their symptoms based on that analysis um, and the assessment I can make with my clients, but it's not something I'd recommend you to go off and do without having guidance from a practitioner because we do need to make sure it's done in a safe way. So plenty for you to think about there. B12 is really something that's often overlooked and I'd really go back and watch my video again. Do remember all of my videos are uploaded into my YouTube channel called Peyton Principles Natural Health. So do go back and watch that um, there, which will be uploaded um, in the next few days. Um, I do save my video here for you to watch in my Facebook group. And um, if you're not on my newsletter, please let me know your email address. Um, you can DM me, you can email me at caroline at Peyton principles.com Peyton is my surname which is in here uh, principles so caroline at peytonprinciples.com if you get onto my newsletter the information I've given here goes out every Friday in my newsletter so if you want to make sure you've got a written copy of that then get onto my newsletter because then you won't miss that that comes out every week so thank you so much for watching tonight and I'll be back next Tuesday for my next installment thanks so much for watching have a great evening bye